back here, so I want to make a philosophical note now. On something called... Um, I've already talked about a lot of this stuff. When I... Um, well, I've alluded to some of it when I've titled it, although I haven't actually talked about it verbally when I've titled it thusly, um, negative transitivity matrices. And I, and I do think there are so many examples of this in so-called philosophical thoughts, i.e. the scientific worldview or paradigm framework, and uh, falls victim of this. Uh, where, where it uh, uses the axiom of transitivity, which is itself problematic. The axiom is problematic. Uh, it, it, it's uh, got vast problems. Um, and I thought I would contrast that with uh, what I am going to... Um, well, yeah, so to get into... So there's a, there's a very good um, debate between... Uh, this is embarrassing, can't remember his name, but um, the, the South African uh, philosophy professor, uh, Benetard, um, Professor Benetard and Jordan Peterson were discussing um, Benetard's uh, uh, stuff on... The anti-natalist uh, stuff. Anyway, the um, this is one sort of example, but um, what's the more important point? The, the more important point is how these sorts of things uh, um, conduct themselves, and I think within that argument you get because um, because Benetard uh, uh, is using philosophy. As it is generally conceived of how it, how you know he's using philosophy at its limits in some sense um, under the philosophical premise that there's nothing wrong with the axiom of transitivity but there is and and he is thus falling victim to this particular property because of how transitivity is generally conceived which is within academia I would even say um, uh, and I'm going to now elaborate on, on these points so the, the, the issue is, is, is when you're in the midst of a negative transitivity matrix, um, the neg when I say negative, what I mean is, um, what I mean by negative is that it's passive or it's indirect. Um, so it's by a kind of indirect imputation. It, it's imputing things um, uh, and it's passively doing this. And, and this is, in a, in a sense, uh, one way of functionally describing how transitivity is, is uh, doing things uh, uh, problematically. Um, now, it does fall under the axiom of transitivity. It does fall under the axiom of transitivity. And uh, the problem with the axiom of transitivity is just that it kind of... It presumes a kind of generic universe on some level. It presumes a kind of quantitative generic uh, element, uh, which is just kind of presupposed. And it does this, I guess, in some way to kind of found uh, a logical uh, dominion, uh, you know, or some kind of the, the, the kind of preeminent dominance of, of logic or, or some such thing. And... Um, and logic actually doesn't operate like that. And I can kind of... I've gotten into arguments myself, and I would say that especially how it covers over itself, um, is that when, when this position, which makes some kind of... Uh, it, when something depends on the axiom of transitivity, and then it's challenged, often the, this error gets uh, um, overlooked or, um, because uh, the person who is contending the transitivity forces the other... Uh, to develop their criticism when already there was a kind of prior prior to that development the, that coerced development I want to say um, of, of the of the opposing arguments 
uh, as it were, there was already a preeminent complaint, which then after it becomes developed, kind of gets mixed in with the transitivity, and then it kind of, you know, you kind of make some kind of mockery of it, that it's it's not being consistent uh, because it's it's half taken in already the, the, the presumption upon which transitivity kind of uh, effectively um, projects its matrix. Uh, uh, so, so you've kind of given over the, the, the turf, or you, you, you've mixed up the, you, your, your own grounding by developing your argument in terms of, of the thing itself. Um, so you've kind of uh, semi-established it in some form and then you're you're kind of met you know you, you can't ever hope to win because you'll never be able to rid yourself of it because you've kind of already imbibed some of it effectively um, okay so let me go back um, so I, I just wanted to point out that uh, so what I call a negative transitivity matrix, the, the opposite of that, uh, and, and this really actually resolves the issue of the axiom of transitivity, which is the topic that I want to get into um, in, in, in talking about it uh, in this voice note, is that uh, the opposite of a negative transitivity matrix is a positive transitivity, uh, sorry, it's not a positive, it's an affirmative transitivity matrix. So the opposite of negative transitivity matrix is a, f a f an affirmative transitivity matrix. Now, now this sets up what it, what transitivity is itself. So it is true that logic is kind of founded on transitivity. It's needed. It, it's it's one of the almost I would say it's one of the vital um, axioms, which as it's depended on you know in general in in the general thought I think of of logic um, and rationality even. Uh, it, it's it's quite a pivotal uh, um, axiom. Without it, it kind of it it, it robs uh, the domain upon which logic itself is operative. And the problem is is now you don't have a, when you go from a negative the 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 um, operation of a negative transitivity matrix, which is effectively what the axiom of transitivity um, uh, uh, provides for. Uh, when you replace that with an affirmative transitivity matrix, um, it, everything becomes a lot more complex, as it were. And, and the, the key difference is, is that all of these things are therefore contentions, and then they can be comparatively taken together. So, okay, I phrased that a, a bit sloppily, but basically what I'm saying is what you end up with is what I would call a pragmatism. And in this pragmatism, so when you have affirmative transitivity matrices, um, you end up having an awareness. Uh, well, it, this eventually, uh, what comes out of it is that you have um, in some sense, uh, you have comparative uh, um, ignorances depending on the context of the affirmative transitivity w which you're likely to um, uh, trying to think of, of good language to use likely to um, be purchased by or likely to uh, have obtain in your mental schema as it were um, 
So, and, and, and this is where the kind of, the property of, you could even call it self-determinism, has to already ground the concept uh, of affirmative transitivity uh, matrices, and, and therefore you get, um, you somewhat get a, a chosen worldview. And everyone can have their chosen worldview, but it's going to have an operative shadow that it's going to cast by that structure. And in a sense, you can only uh, have some form of, of formal uh, um, uh, uh. You can only have some kind of formal cognizance of this field of knowledge. Um, in as much as, as you have an awareness of the darkness that pertains to each affirmative transitivity matrix. And so there, there is a set of these things. And, um, and then obviously the, the ones that kind of become preeminent are the ones which stay grounded in a kind of uh, uh, self-determinism. Or, you know, as soon as you've got a schema that kind of is operating from this kind of disembodied, abstracted, uh, uh, denies free will, you know, kind of has this knowledge from the perspective of some kind of pagan sky father or some kind of, you know, kind of objectivism, which is actually, I, I would link that um, to what... what this notion of a negative transitivity matrix, that there's some kind of pervasive knowledge that, that, exist as a, a, that exists as a kind of abstracted generic medium which we just exist in the matrix of. You know, that, that notion is really quite alien to even intellect, you know, especially to, to the platonic um, um, conception of the intellect as well, I would say. Um, And uh, although it's not completely um, pertinent, but, but it, do, it does, there are some themes which you can link to Aristotle's agent causation, which is that uh, the rock is moved by a staff, and the staff is moved by a hand, and the hand is moved by a man. So the um, let me see. Um, The, those thematic uh, interpenetrations, uh, although I did kind of intuitively uh, work out that there there is a, a deep um, intersection of of uh, important uh, substance there, but. Um, actually kind of covered that in, in some other recordings, although I don't know if I've made those recordings available, but anyway, um, let me see, there, there is the, um, the other 
was a thing that I wanted to. Uh, illustrated more the, the different errors and, and issues with the negative transitivity matrices um, to then contrast that with the affirmative transitivity matrix um, notion which uh, which doesn't uh, suffer from those sorts of it is almost possible to have your cake and eat it but I would say the main difference is is that when you're working in a philosophical framework which is positing out the agent in some way like science does you can still kind of farm it for some kind of technical know-how on some very approximate levels let's just say um, which which completely fall apart as soon as you start getting into wanting to understand time itself, you know, then it just completely fucks up, which is where we're at with science, and where it's kind of insoluble, where it's reached an insoluble um, kind of shit show in which all it can do is say, well, human beings don't have the mind to understand the scientific reality, the way that, that uh, science is describing itself, um, you know, it, it, it's it's that kind of uh, uh, really pseudo-religious blind faith bullshit, really. Um, I mean, you, you can't... I mean, it, it literally is a bandwagon. It, it is a kind of low-energy groupthink, which, because they've got the jargon and the white lab coats, they kind of get away with. And then they've got all the philosophical people kind of, you know... Uh, running around like headless chickens divided enough that they can get away with it and they've got all the people in, in the soft sciences licking their boots no one in psychology has the, the kind of the temerity to assert the preeminence of, of you know the kind of an organizing consciousness under some kind of philosophical contention of you know I mean there, there are um, aspects you know the, 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 there are fields which could which could kind of cover the subject matter. I'm sure there are some, uh, you know, it, uh, some form of, of, of scientifically uh, assimilated uh, phenomenology and such. I don't know how that must have been repressed or something like that. Um,
dragged on for long enough.